Leia here from LeiaForSci.com. In this video, I will take you through another common type of NMR problem where you are given a set of molecules, one or more graphs, and asked to match them up. In this case, we have five molecules and one graph. Click to go back to my previous NMR video. For molecule B, we are given a cyclic ether, and I will draw this in a way that we can clearly identify the symmetry. Notice that there's a plane of symmetry going right down the middle, which means all the groups on the right will have equivalent hydrogens on the left. First, we have two hydrogens that are on the carbon directly attached to the oxygen. Next, we have two hydrogens on each side. And then we have one more set of two hydrogens that does not have a mirror or a partner. Even though we have four green hydrogens, we look at one set at a time, and each set of green hydrogens has two purple neighbors, which means using n plus 1, we have 2 plus 1 equals 3, so we get a green triplet. And this triplet, being that it's directly near the oxygen, is going to have the highest chemical shift on this molecule. So we can put the shift anywhere between 0 and 5, and just note that it will be the highest on the molecule. Again, these exact values are not as important as recognizing the relationship between the other groups on the molecule. For the purple set of hydrogens, we have two green hydrogens and two blue hydrogens for a total of four neighbors. N plus 1 gives me 4 plus 1, which is 5, and this will give me a quintet. Given that it's a little bit farther away from the oxygen, we expect this to be more towards the boring or the right of the graph, so we can expect a shift anywhere between 0 and 3. And last but not least, we have our two blue hydrogens, which has four hydrogen neighbors. So once again, we get n plus 1 for a total of 5, which is another quintet. However, the difference between the two quintets is the purple one represents four hydrogens, while the blue one only represents two hydrogens. Given that this group is as far away from the oxygen as possible, this will be all the way to the right. We don't need the exact number, just know that it's near zero, and it'll be the closest group near zero. We'll map it out, marking zero on one side, 12 on the other side, without worrying about the exact numbers in between. We'll start with the most boring group and draw a small quintet to represent two hydrogens. A little bit to the left of that, we'll draw a larger quintet to represent four hydrogens. And finally, shifted even more to the left, we'll have a triplet representing my last four hydrogens. And this is what the graph would look like. For molecule C, we are given a cyclopentanol, which is a cyclopentane with an alcohol coming off it. Let's first mark off the different types of hydrogen. We have the hydrogen on the OH group. On the cyclopentane, we have a single hydrogen on the tertiary carbon. We have two hydrogens on each side neighboring that green hydrogen. And lastly, we have two more hydrogens on each side. Recognize a plane of symmetry on the molecule, implying that the hydrogens on the top will be represented by the same peaks as the hydrogen on the bottom. And now let's predict what they'll look like. The yellow hydrogen will show up as a small peak somewhere between 0 and 5 on the graph. Since this hydrogen is not on the carbon, you do not expect to see any splitting. Moving over to the green hydrogen, we have one hydrogen with four hydrogen neighbors. N plus 1 gives me 4 plus 1, which is 5, giving me a septet representing one single hydrogen. For the purple hydrogens, we have four purple hydrogens, which each have three neighbors, the green on one side and the blue on the other side. N plus 1, or 3 plus 1, gives me 4, and so we will have four hydrogens represented by quartet. Last but not least, we have four blue hydrogens, each one split by two hydrogen neighbors. N plus 1, or 4 plus 1, gives me 5, and so we have four hydrogens represented by a quintet. Now let's guesstimate where each one will show up on the graph. Since the blue hydrogens are farthest away from the oxygen, the shift will be somewhere near zero, say zero to two, but it'll be closest to zero given that it is the most boring hydrogen or farthest away from the most electronegative group. 
The purple hydrogens are slightly closer to the oxygen, and so their shift will be slightly higher. So we can guess perhaps somewhere between 1 and 3. The green hydrogen, being directly attached to the oxygen, is going to be the most shifted, and we can guess this one to be somewhere near 3 and 5. The alcohol can show up anywhere on the graph, and guesstimation is not enough to give you the exact location, but if you can predict the rest of the graph, you should be able to recognize this, regardless of having placed the alcohol in the correct or incorrect location. Let's see what this would look like on a graph. Once again, I number from 0 to approximately 12. I start with the least exciting group, which is my four hydrogens in a quintet near 0. This is followed by four hydrogens in a quartet, somewhere to the left of that. And finally, we have one hydrogen in a quintet, even more to the left. You can choose to put the lone alcohol hydrogen either on this side or on this side. Maybe put a question mark next to it and then look to recognize it on your graph. For molecule D, we are given a perfectly symmetrical ketone. Since there is a plane of symmetry down the middle, once again, we will have symmetrical hydrogens on either side. For the terminal carbon, we have three hydrogens on each side. This gives me six hydrogens. For the next carbon, we have two hydrogens on each side for a total of four hydrogens. The central carbon being bound to two carbons and an oxygen does not have any hydrogens. Since our six hydrogens are each neighboring two hydrogens, we get n plus 1 or 2 plus 1 equals 3, and this gives me a triplet. The purple hydrogens are each neighbored by 3 hydrogens, and therefore n plus 1 or 3 plus 1 gives me 4, and this gives me a quartet. Now let's predict the chemical shift for each peak. Since the terminal hydrogens are farthest away from the carbonyl and are terminal to the molecule, they will have the lowest shift. Since we only have two peaks, we'll just call them lower and higher. The quartet is located near a carbonyl and another group, and so it'll have the higher shift. And that's it. If we draw out a graph, put zero on one side, we take the lower one first, draw our triplet, followed by our quartet. Pretty easy, right? And last but not least, we have an aldehyde. Since there is no plane of symmetry on this molecule, every set of hydrogens will have their own unique peak. Starting from the right, we have three terminal hydrogens, followed by two hydrogens, followed by two more, two more, and last but not least, we have the aldehyde hydrogen. The purple hydrogens on the end have two neighbors, n plus one or two plus one gives me three, and so we will have a triplet. The two green hydrogens have three neighbors on the right, two neighbors on the left. For a total of five neighbors, five plus one gives me six, or a sextet. The red hydrogens have two neighbors on the right, two neighbors on the left. Four plus one is five, and that gives me a quintet. And the orange hydrogens have only two neighbors on the right for a triplet. We'll leave the aldehyde hydrogen for the end. Let's go back and predict the chemical shifts. This molecule actually makes it rather simple. Given that your exciting functional group is all the way on the left, the farther away from the functional group you go, the closer to the right or the boron region that your peak will show up. That means if we start from the right, the purple group will be our first peak, the green group will be the second, red third, and orange will be fourth. The actual numbers don't matter because we're guessing so that we can recognize the graph if we see it. And now going back to the hydrogen on the aldehyde, we'll have one lone peak showing up somewhere 9 plus on the graph. Now let's see what this would look like. Put a zero on the right and follow the colors accordingly. We'll start with a purple triplet, a green sextet, a red quintet, an orange triplet, and last but not least, a small peak all the way to the left. This is the graph that you would expect for the aldehyde. What I'd like to do now 
is compare the graph that we were given to each of the graphs that we predicted. We've already confirmed that choice A was the correct answer. However, let's take a look. We have our doublet to the right, followed by a singlet, followed by the multiplet. We've already proven why this is correct, so let's now look at B. Our graph for B has three peaks, just like the graph that we were given. One thing you can do when trying to compare a molecule to a graph is predict the number of peaks that you will see and then compare them. But while B does have three peaks, the peaks are very different. This can easily be identified by the presence of a singlet in the given graph, but no singlet in the graph for molecule B. Comparing our graph to molecule C, recognize that in addition to the three peaks for this molecule, we also have the peak for the hydrogen, which essentially gives me four peaks on the graph, something I don't have on my molecule. Also recognize that that single hydrogen is one little peak, while the one hydrogen on the given molecule is a multiplet, which is another giveaway that this is not the correct answer. Molecule D is easy to rule out because it only has two peaks and we were given three peaks in our sample graph. And last but not least, molecule E has four peaks plus the aldehyde for a total of five, while our example graph only has three peaks. The reason I went through all these steps, even though we've solved the problem within the first 10 minutes, is because it's not just about this example. I want to make sure that you understand how to approach these problems, why you break it down in each method, so regardless of how the problem is presented to you, you will have at least one method that you can use to solve the problem and one or two fallback methods in case you get stuck. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, download my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry, using the link below, or visit layofersci.com slash orgo secrets. That's O-R-G-O secrets. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and even share it with a friend or two. If you have any questions regarding this video, leave a comment below or contact me through my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash There will be many related videos posted over the course of the semester, so go ahead and click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss out.